almost finished with the first time. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. And reverse, verse 20. Those that are listening to us, if you'd like to call us, give us a call at 856-261-9018. Or give us an email. Questions at vftvc.org. Glad to hear from you. Say hello. Some questions or comments. All right, First John 5. And let's read verses 20 and 21 of the chapter, starting with verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in the Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. By verse 20. And we know, who's the we referring to there? 520. Who's the we referring to there? Believers. Christian believers. Uh, what were the, what were the hyper-Calvinists, not hyper hyper hyper-dispensationalists say this refers to? Jews. The Jews, just the Jews. What do they say about the book of, uh, of uh, James and 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation? What do the hyper-dispensationalists say about those books? The gospel is only to the Jews. Jews only, and nothing for the Christians. But we believe it's for the Christians. We don't agree with the hyper dispensations on that. So it says that we, and we know in verse, know that the Son of God has come. Who is the Son of God? Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, what are some other titles for the Lord Jesus Christ? Savior. Son of Man. Savior. 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 Redeemer. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Red Light. Counselor. Right of life, mediator, mighty, mighty God, the way, the door, the life. way, the truth, the life, way, the truth, the life. Prince of Peace, Morning Star, Morning Star. Was it? the Mighty God, the Mighty God. God. Okay, I got all those names. different names. Uh, water of life, as well as the bread of life. So these are the <laughs> Son of God. We know that the Son of God has come. What does that mean? Has come. What does that mean? We know He's come. Come to the earth. That was the first time, first time, first coming. And the Apostle John is right to these people. And uh, they all know. Yes, huh? This is going back a little bit, but uh, the hyper dispensationalists, I, uh, I think we should tell Paul that's what, that's what Mr. Carroll was. Yeah. Yes, yes, Mr. Carroll was hyper dispensational. So Explain to him what that means, because he asked why he didn't come. Yes, why? The, 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 we got Kathy, the our pianist, on. Uh, he was uh, believed that all these books are not for Christians, but for just for the Jews. See? And so uh, he uh, he thought that when God looks upon us, he doesn't, we don't have any sin. In other words, almost sinless perfection. Uh, I realize if you're generally saved on the books of heaven, you've got a clean slate. But on earth, our state is not perfect. It's not sinless. And so I said, well, let's quote John, 1 John 1, 9. Let's quote it right now. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I said, who's the we refer to? And uh, he said, Jews. I said, no, it's Christians. Jews, Christians, Jews. And then he walked out. So he believed very strongly, Paul, that First John has nothing whatever to do with Christians. Nor the Gospel of John, nothing to no, do with not Christians. Christians. Not right, not the Christians, just not the Jews. The Jewish Christians? Well, no, he, he believes just the Jewish book. The hybrid special says just the books of Paul. I don't know why he says that Hebrews is written by Paul. I agree that it was written by but most hybrid specialists say that Paul did not write Hebrews. So just the books from Romans before Hebrews, they can take those, the rest of them, don't touch them. So anyhow, but here we believe in this verse 20, we know the Son of God has come, the first coming, and what has he done in verse 20? And verse, what's the next thing he's done? Yes, I understand. Remember we talked about it a little bit last Sunday. <clears throat> How, what did we say at understanding men? What is understanding? What did we decide? Or Perception. Didn't we, what is it? Perception. Perception, that's part of it, yeah. What else? Comprehension. Comprehension. In other, in other words, so get the cast. Well, the way I would read it, I would say the understanding is that we come to know that Jesus Christ really did die for our sins. Okay. Just, in that sense, that understanding. All right. Get the cast. Okay. I'm assuming, Tammy. I wasn't here, but I'm guessing that this is referring to 
the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The illumination of the Holy Spirit. Right? We have an understanding. As we comprehend, we understand, we have these things. Uh, knowledge is one thing. Understanding is another thing. Isn't it? You can have a knowledge that uh, 2 plus 2 is 4, but if you don't understand the, the means of it, uh, understanding. Facts are different. So we have an understanding. But then the understanding, as Scott said, is that we may know what? Him, Him that is true. Who's that referring to? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. What's one of his titles? The truth. truth. Him that is true. Did the Lord Jesus ever tell lies? No. 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 Did he ever deceive anybody? No. 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 He had no guile found in his mouth. And so he was true. That we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. What does it mean to be in him? Who's the him referred to there? Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ? Be saved. What? Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things begin to. So, so that's another verse that says we're in Him, in Christ. So, and it was like uh, Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we're in, if we're in Christ, what does that mean? What is the nature of being in Christ? Who's that referred to? Who was in Christ? Yeah, Cass? It means that we are uh, saved by His blood and we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Yes. No, I can pass. I mean, <laughs> the Father sees us through the Son. We are oh, all right. <clears throat> now, see, that's why I believe very strongly that every saved, born again Christian is in the body of Christ, and Christ the head of that body. When we're in that body, yeah. we're in Christ. Right? The head. That, to me, it, it's a similar situation. That's a tremendous uh, uh, title, a wonderful place to be. Paul said, accepted in the beloved. Remember, that's in Christ the beloved. So we know then that it's, we're in him that is true. And again, even the Son, Jesus. His Son, in what way was the Lord Jesus the Son of the Father? In what way was the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Father? He's the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God, that's right. Uh, was the what would it mean, the father and son relationship? What does that imply? It's an order. It's an order, all right. Relationship, order, and uh, does that imply that one is deity and the other is not deity? Both deity. Both deity, exactly, like God the Holy Spirit. And uh, <coughs> the question that many people raise, in fact, people question, when did the sonship of Christ originate for the father? It's always, always been, always been the eternal eternity. Son of God. Some say, oh no, wasn't eternally the Son, he just became the Son when he was on this earth or for the resurrection or some other reason. We believe he's always eternally Son of God. <clears throat> so the Trinity, how old is the Trinity? Eternal. 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 How old? Eternal. Yes, it's been way from eternity back. Yeah, okay. uh, uh, if you give yeah, on. The word Trinity is, the, I don't know, it began, the word Trinity. Uh -huh. The fact That's the question. No, I meant how old is the is the triune God? Okay. That's what I meant. It's eternal. Eternal, right? For all eternity. And even though some deny that. Ageless. He's ageless. ageless. That's right, ageless. Just like Melchizedek, without father, without mother, from the beginning of the earth, from the beginning of eternity, no, no beginnings. He had no beginning. Isn't that one of the names of God, the ageless? Something about ageless? Can't remember. What? Uh, the Father of Eternity, I think, is one name for the Lord. The Father of Eternity. Uh, even His Son, Jesus Christ. And then uh, this last part of verse 20, many are denying these days. What does it say about the last verse through 20? What is it teaching there? 520. The Lord Jesus Christ is true God. Lord Jesus Christ is true God. This is the true God. And what else? Eternal life. Now, some people deny the deity of Christ. They say it's never taught in the Bible. Are they right or wrong? It's taught right here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I can you think of some other places where it might be taught. John 1 1. And they have the word, where we got the word was God. That the word is like in verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ, the word became flesh. So I'm like Hebrews uh, chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Right? Yeah. What is that? Um, but unto the Son who saith, Thy throne of God is forever yes. and ever. Hebrews 1. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom, which is a 
Psalm 93, verse 2. Uh -huh. And so the Father says to the Son, Thy, son, thy throne, O oh God, is forever, and thy throne, O oh God, deity is so. And then, uh, actually, if you understand it rightly, even Titus chapter 2, uh, practically, verse 13, uh, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, referring to Christ as the God and Savior of all. Yes, yeah, The verse that we were um, quoting today, um, 1 Timothy 3.16, about controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, which yes. is manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Yes, one of our verses we read this afternoon. God manifests in the flesh. Is that in all the new Bibles? No. Why did they take it off? Gnosticism. Gnosticism. What part did they take out? God. The word God. Did the, do the Nazis believe the Lord Jesus Christ was God? No. 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 What did they think he was? Just a good man. A man? And need to be saved. The Christ principle came Christ. Upon when did the Christ principle come upon him, according to Gnosticism? Baptism. Baptism. When did the Christ principle leave him? At his death. At his death at the cross, okay? Questions at bfcbc.org or 856 261 9018. Give us a call or comment. Glad to hear from you. Yeah, Bob? I know I've said this before, but that's what that one chapel was teaching, uh, you know, during the Good Friday services and all that. About the, how it came down when he's baptized. Huh? Is that the Southern Baptist Center or the other chapter? Um, I don't know. I can see his face on it, but I can't tell. Was it Boyd? Uh, no, it wasn't Boyd. It was another Southern Baptist one. Yeah, the Methodist one. Yeah. 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 Y
And then the last word is amen. Any other comments on chapter 5 of 1 John? All right, let's move on to 2 John. Who's the author of 2 John? John. The Apostle John again. The writer is uh, John. The writer, yeah, John, that's right. Uh, and uh, what's he calling himself? Let's read verses 1, 2, and 3 of 2 John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not I only, but that so all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. All right, the elder lady. Who do you think that would refer to? Could be. Could be the elect lady. Could be the church. Who else? Yeah. Could be a special woman in the church. Yes. Uh, could it be John that's referring to himself as an older person? Um, you know, there's, you said, you said the elder, elder, the elder lady, but it's the elder to the elect lady. lady. Yeah, I'll, 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 what I ask is, who is the elder? The elder's John. Oh, John. Okay. John. okay. <laughs> I, I got the question wrong. Who's that? That's what I was getting. Who's the elder? Thank you for correcting me. That's why we didn't get the answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, under the elect lady, who would that be? The church, perhaps. Probably those that are saved, born again. Christians there at the Paul's I John's think right. Woman. I, I like to think it was a woman. Well, what does the church refer to as? Masculine, feminine, or neuter? Feminine. 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 Uh, the church which is his body is a feminine. So this could be the feminine, the, the believers, the saved people. Uh, and her children, what would that be? <laughs> the, those that came to Christ. Maybe those that came to Christ in, the, in that assembly of people. Church church. members, congregation. Could be congregation, people or are going in. Pardon me? Well, it could be spiritual to her children and in the faith. It could be literal, yes. Uh, but if the elect lady is spiritual, it's the church of the believers, and the old children would also be spiritual, figurative, those that are part of that church family, right? And then it says, not I only. What does that mean? What? Christ, okay. In other words, he's writing unto the only unto. Uh, what does unto mean in this verse number one? Unto. Words. The elder unto. Yeah. That, what does that mean? How? What does that consist of? The unto. It's being. This letter's being sent to them. Okay. See, in other words, I'm writing to you. I'm writing unto you. So it's the. The, the addressees, right? Mm -hmm. Cash, you have something? No. I'm sorry, Tammy? No. Okay, fine. Uh, have we decided the elder here is John the Apostle? Probably John the Apostle, yes. mm -hmm. the author. Uh, the, the elect, the, not only unto, in other words, he's writing unto these people, and not I only. Who would that refer back to? The elder unto the elect lady. For my love in the truth. What does that mean? Yeah. How do you love someone in the truth? What does that mean? Okay. All right. So what? What is? All right. That could be. What is the meaning of that? To well, love somebody in the truth. What about loving somebody in error? Is that possible? Yes. Should we do that? Should we love somebody? <laughs> we, but what does it mean in the truth? Well, say for again, living for the Lord, probably following the Word of God, the truth, loving in the truth. <clears throat> so, uh, all them that have loving the truth, and not I only. In other words, the elder is not the only one that's writing. The others are collectively writing this letter to this elect lady of the church there. Well, I thought I meant, yeah, Bob? I thought I meant, uh, I love in the truth, and not only I love in the truth, but also they are God. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Could be that they all they that have known the truth. Uh, we, whom I love. Him. So the John loves in the truth this church and elect lady, the believers, and others who have known the truth follow John in loving that particular local church as well. All right, anything else on verse 2? Yeah, Anna. Copy love. love, that's fine. What is the copy love versus phileo love? Well, agape is. That's the type of love that has to come from God. In other words, 
we can have agape love because God enables us to have agape love. Like, the unbelievers have the level of love, but because we're saved, we can have agape love. Okay, we can have God's love working through us, can I? Can Christians have agape love? Well, yes, evidently, because the elder has agape love for the elect lady and her children. Anybody else want to answer that? I'm just asking. Yes, I believe you. What is that? Because it's the it's power of the, the Spirit. Yes. For the Spirit, yes. It's it's right. Isn't that the word agape love? Yes, that's Where right. It's 13. Yes. Uh, Galatians 5. That's right now. Agape love, agape is, is a type of love, a quality of love, a fervency of love. And uh, remember, we discussed that a couple of weeks ago, uh, when it said something that somebody didn't agree with. How could it be agape love? Plus, if it's strong love, even if, can people have a strong love for, for maybe falsehood? Could it be really strong and yes. overcoming, penetrating? Yeah, Anna. It is agape in 5.22, Galatians 5.22. Yes, okay. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Thanks, fruit of the Spirit, absolutely. Any other comments on verse 1? <coughs> no, in the truth. Now, how do you, what is the truth? What are you talking about? In the truth, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, Caroline. In John 17.17, 17, it says, Sacrifice them through thy word, through thy truth, and the word is truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth, isn't it? The Bible is truth, and uh, sometimes it's mentioned that through that, for thy word is truth. Yes. Another well, name for the scripture, isn't it? Probably in Psalm 119, that might be used one of the words in 176 verses. Is it 176, I believe? Uh, if possible. Truth. I'm not really sure whether it's in Psalm 119, but a lot of titles for the truth. There's the scriptures of the Bible. Is it important that we get the right Bible? Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, Dan's going to be talking about the American Standard Version of 1901 at the Dean Bergen Society next uh, July 23rd. And uh, <clears throat> some of the people have said that uh, there's no verse in the whole New Testament manuscripts that we have that has any doctrinal error. Everything is truth. And of course, is that true? Is that true? They say that everything in the manuscripts, we had everything. No doctors are about all the manuscripts, okay. critical manuscripts, Gnostic manuscripts, receive text. Truth is always there. No, no falsehood in the whole thing. Is that true or false? Yeah. It's false. There's a lot. There's 356 doctrinal passages where the Westcott North critical Gnostic text is wrong. And so these people are saying, don't find any truth, no problem, everything's fine. It's not fine. Yeah, Bill? Uh, I've heard that uh, on uh, the Sinai text, uh, there is as many as 18 corrections on every page. Entirely possible. 18 corrections on every page. Entirely possible. That Sinai text will be, uh, it's Aleph. It's called Aleph of the Sinai manuscript. Sinai text. Right, so the truth is the scripture is very important. We have the right scripture, they have the right truth. And then in verse 2, for the truth's sake. What does that mean? Remember the first verse is the elder unto the elect lady. And for the truth of what does that, how does that work into the first verse? Whom I love in the truth. Because All right. Of the truth. All right. But for the truth's sake, what does that go with? That's, for, that's why. Because of the truth. Isn't that why he loves the black lady and the children? Yeah, it's right. And probably why he's writing the letter. For the sake of the truth. For the truth. He's writing the black lady. For the truth's sake, because of the truth's sake, he's writing this short letter to them. Uh, now it says, the truth's sake which dwelleth in us. What does that mean? Who's the S referred to? Believers. Believers, saved, born again, Christians. What does that mean? The truth dwelleth in us. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what else might it mean? Well, Holy Spirit in us, and because I, the truth is able to get Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the truth in it, yeah, right? Well, when you're a Christian, you should have truth. You should be truth, truthful. Mm -hmm. So truth, it, it changes the truth to dwell in us if you're a Christian. In other words, if we accept the scriptures, which are true, 
And the reason part of them is part of us is, is in the truth. And that walks one way of looking at it. Yes, Dan? So in other words, when you know the scriptures and live the scriptures and believe the scriptures, isn't that the sense truth is dwelling in you? Mm-hmm. See, we know the truth, the scriptures that tell us, and we know the gospel, truth is dwelling in us. So I think that's one of the senses of me. Uh, <clears throat> truth is, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. What, who's that refer back to? What shall be with us? The word of God. The word of God, the truth, yes. right? The truth. Jesus Christ. Okay. And shall be with us forever. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will be with us forever. We'll never depart from Him. Uh, in John 14, 1, 2, 3, in my Father's house are many mansions. So not so, I would have told you. I go to the fair place for you. And where I am, there He may be also. Was it, oh, was it? Fair place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that you may be also. So that's uh, tied in to the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll never leave us. We'll never leave him. Once we exit this earth, we're with him forever. And uh, so <clears throat> the all that know the truth, the true sake, which well is, it shall be with us forever. All right, any other comments on two? By right, verse three, what's the salutation? Grace. Grace. I mean, grace means what? Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor, that's right. God's riches. God's righteousness. Christ, God's riches. God's riches at Christ's expense, that's another way. Any others? God's forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgiveness is all involved in that, isn't it? So grace be with you. What's the second part of the salutation? Mercy. And how will we mercy. redefine mercy? Not getting what we deserve. Pardon me? Not getting what we deserve. Not getting what we deserve. <laughs> but some has that in every single verse. We read it this last week. What does it say it's Psalm? His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Every single verse, it ends with that. I don't remember which Psalm it is. Is it Psalm 117, 118, 107, 16? One of those early Psalms. Was that was the Psalm? After, maybe it's after 119. No, it's um, 136. Oh, 136, all right. Read the couple of verses for us. I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I'll give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. I'll give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. We don't get what we deserve because of his mercy. And that's a wonderful characteristic of the Lord. So... Here, grace is the first, so the mercy is the second. What's the third part of his reading? Peace. And what would that mean? Tranquility of the soul, uh, whereby assuring of its eternal salvation, you contend with its earthly line, so appearing nothing from God and something. Whatever short it may be, something like that, right? Well, that's right. So the Facebook page, isn't it? So if I knew what you'd look at the Facebook page, it's on there. What is it? Look for the, look for the uh, Who put it on? Facebook people. It's, it's, a, it's, got, a, it's got a blue background. Blue oh. background with white letters. Oh, very good. So if somebody could look it up and they could look up on Facebook. All right. Uh, it's, the, it's the Bible for today. What's, the, what's, the, what's her handle? The Bible for today. Very good. Either incorporated or the Bible for today about this church. Either one of the things. Well, so go to our webpage and our Facebook page and read it back to us. How does people, how, yeah. if you want to do that, anybody listening, you can read it back to it. How do people get peace with God? Accepting Christ as Savior. Accepting Christ. What verse tells us that? We have peace through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's true. What verse is that? Romans, 5, Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's so say, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. That's peace with God. Then there's a peace of God as well. So these three the parts of the greeting, grace, mercy, and peace. Now, from what persons of the Godhead is he greeting? Them? From what persons of the Godhead is he greeting these people? 
Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Is, is God what? the Father. God the Father. All right. Uh, he identifies the Holy Spirit as I mentioned. He's certainly part of the Trinity. Now, when you put God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, what does that do with the relationship between those two persons of the Godhead? The same. Same in what sense? Trinity. They're both God. They're both deity. Uh, are they the same person, or what do you mean? They're different persons, yeah. but the same divine essence. Different persons. They're both deity. That's the point. They're both deity, and uh, they're on a par. They're equal, equal attributes of both. And lots of the Unitarians, what do they think of the deity of Christ? They don't believe, they don't believe he's created. They don't believe he's, he's God, he's just a created being, and they don't believe in the deity. So this equates and puts together on the same plane the Father, God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Same, equal things, equal attributes in all areas. And uh, he identifies the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of the Father. And then it says, in what areas and what dimensions is he greeted in? In verse number three. Truth, Truth and, and love. love. Now, truth and love, when he tells some people the truth, does that always mean that they have a love for what you tell them? No. Why is that? They won't, they won't accept it, don't accept it. No, oh, accept the possibility. Why else? Yes, yes? But, but the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit. All right. So if you try to tell somebody that it's not saying uh -huh. the truth, it's not often received with love. All right, so that's that's one thing. Uh, does the truth always? Yes. Uh, I have here like. in uh, Romans uh, chapter one, verse seven. It says, "To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ." That's the Father and the Lord Jesus. There again, there's unity, there's equality of attributes, the Father and the Son. All right, so. Does everyone who's born again and saved, even, really genuine Christian, always want to know the truth about things? They should. They should, but do they always want to know the truth about things? Uh, people generally, if you tell them the truth, are they always greeting you and thanking you for what you tell them? No. When the Lord Jesus met the Pharisees and talked about them in Matthew 23, did they welcome his truth? Yeah. Did he tell the truth about them? Yeah. All right, he didn't. He's never with any guy out on his own, no hypocrisy. <clears throat> what were some of the eight truths that he told them? What word did he use eight times? Yeah? Whoa. Whoa, what was you? And what was, was it? <laughs> Hypocrites, one thing. That's right. See, these things. Some people, some hurt, the truth a lot of times hurts us, especially if we're in error. When you get the truth, it really hurts, doesn't it? And so, but the, the love and truth. Uh, in Hebrews 12, it says, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And so, the chastening is what we need if we're out of line, just as a little child, and uh, it's not always easy. It's, it's sort of abrupt and it's painful sometimes, but it's, it's because God loves us. He wants us in line. He wants us to get right in line. But it's sort of love, and truth and love. Let's read verse 4, 5, and 6 together. I rejoice Please greatly in the time of thy children walking in truth as we have received the commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which is the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that is the beginning. We should walk in it. All right. So verse number four. Uh, who's the I refer to? John. John, probably the author John. I rejoice greatly. Uh, what does that mean to rejoice scripturally? We're glad, we're glad, thankful. Uh, is that can 
Can unsaved lost people scripturally rejoice? What do they call it? Happiness. Happiness, you know, giddiness and laughing around. But this is, what is the difference between just simple laughter and Christian rejoicing? Unsaved, uh, they're proud of themselves. Uh, right. But uh, the saved ones are always thankful to God for the blessings that He's given us. What did Paul say to the Philippian Christians when he was in prison? Rejoice, rejoice always. Right. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. It's, a, it's something the Holy Spirit of God must give us love, joy. That's part of the joy of rejoice. Christian rejoicing is different than the world's. Cackling like a bunch of hens with chickens, cackling through their beer or their wine or whatever it is, and their drunken orgies. But I rejoiced greatly. Why did John rejoice greatly in this first number four? Not just a simple rejoice, but greatly. Why? Because the children walking in truth. Uh, what does that mean? Children walking in the truth. Obedience to the scriptures and obedience. Obedience to the scriptures. That's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, I'm sure a father or mother would rejoice in their physical children that walked in the proper manner. See? I, rejoice, a, I rejoice that my children walk in the proper manner. Yes, I do too. Yes. Uh, yes? I have a, my contact is my grandson, Don, you know, uh -huh. and I rejoice with him because he's going to heaven. Uh -huh. And I rejoice every time I talk to him, we get deeper into scriptures. He's not saved yet. Uh -huh. But he's getting so interested and so open that when I hang up, I'm so joyful and so Praise grateful Lord. to the Lord uh -huh. that he allows me this privilege to talk to him. Wonderful. So he can rejoice in the fact that he's yeah, open. Yes. Wonderful. We'll continue to pray for her. Is it grandson, right? Grandson, uh, no. Yeah. I'm the grandson. That's right. Wonderful. So we rejoice greatly. Uh, the Lord can fill our hearts with their love, joy, and peace if we are filled and controlled by God the Holy Spirit. Uh, I just read, they found of thy children walking in truth. Now, do some saved born again Christians not walk in truth? Unfortunately, yes, sometimes. What does that mean, not to walk in the truth? What does it mean to walk in the truth? Carnal backsliding. Christians. Could be backsliding. What's that, Bill? Carnal Christians. Carnal Christians, that's another term for it. Or fleshly Christian Carnal walking. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. What's that, Kat? Walking in the truth and being walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit and in the Word of God and following the Scriptures and so on, walking in truth. And I'll remember some of those uh, 13 characteristics that we talked about this morning from David Cobb, that article on new evangelicalism. 13 characteristics. If you notice through those characteristics, does a new evangelical really want to walk in the truth? They may think they are, but they really want. They, they have all questions about these things, and uh, they don't want to be uh, negative. They want to be positive. All these different things. There's certain things. Uh, are there any commands in Scripture at all? Yes. There's commands. Are things in Scripture that are negatives? We shouldn't do certain things. Yes. That's right. So, is God negative at times? Yes. No. And yes. yes. Who's, who's right? Thou shalt not. How many thou shalt not? Ten depends on that. Nine. Nine. Are you sure they're nine? Eight. Okay. Eight. Ten is right. Okay, eight. What are the yeah, Bill? That's really not a negative, though. I mean, we think of it as a negative, but uh, God is correcting us, uh, or we're learning the truth. That's positive. Yeah. Because we're replacing an old idea which is wrong. Right. Are we using negative in the grammatical sense or in the. In the uh, I think we're using it in the grammatical sense. Yes, in the Ten Commandments you have a negative. But, and there's, there's how many negatives in the Ten Commandments? Two. Two positives. Two positives. How many negatives? Honor. Eight negatives. Oh, eight. 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 eight and two. Okay, eight and two. So these people that are against negativism, uh, there's commands in the New Testament. Uh, uh, we're to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. So. Walking in the truth, that's a wonderful thing. And our own children, just physical children, if you have them, uh, we rejoice if our children are walking in the truth. It's amazing, wonderful thing. So he rejoiced in his spiritual children as we have received the commandment from the Father. What does that mean? 
as we have truth as we have received the commandment. The commandments of God's word. Right, the commandments of God's so word. They, they take they take the commandments immediately and apply them, it sounds like. Okay, they apply the commandments, the ones that God says to do this and do that, and they walk right into those truths, and they're they're very happy to do that. Uh, and then uh, in verse number five, and now I beseech thee, what's beseech me? What is it? Beg or urge or entreat. Entreat, all those words. Lady, again, this is a lady, like in verse 1. If that's the church, those are saved people in that local church. Not as though I wrote a new commandment. Why does he say that? It's the same. Nothing new. He's mentioned it in 1 John. 1 John. He's mentioned in the Gospel of John. Yeah, that's right. So it's not a new new commandment. Uh, he's mentioned that this is the commandment. Of how would you define commandment? What would that be? What does the word commandment it's mean? Law. law could be. What else? A commandment. Instruction. Instruction. Any other words for it? Would it be an order? Be something order? Command is a commandment. Uh, it says unto the uh, not a new commandment, that which we had from the beginning. What is the commandment in verse five? What is the commandment in verse five? Of one another. Uh, not new. When was the first time that we read about that in the scripture? Yeah. Book of John. Book of John. The Gospel of John. And who said it? The Lord Jesus well, Christ. Christ. How did he phrase it? I'll mention another, you know, the disciples of the world, one to another, is that, is that Okay. Uh, different, he said different times, different ways. Yeah. One of the times he says, this is my commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. Uh, and also he said, by this shall all men know that you have your disciples if you have love one to another. So he phrased it, he phrased it different ways, different times. It's not a new, it's not a new commandment. John is telling you they've been there for a long time, so he's repeating it. Uh, who's the one another mean? Or who's that? What? One another, who's that? Christ born again Christians. Now, as we said many times before, does that mean that we have to agree 100% with one another? To love them? It's hard. Oh, it's harder, maybe. Uh, did God, did we all agree with God before he loved the world? Who are born? Is it divine? Is it divine? Is he able to love the world and send his son? Mm -hmm. Since God so loved the world, what does that mean? Agape. Yes, he, he wanted them to the come to his son. People in the world. What is it? The people in the world. People in the world, that's right. That, that doesn't mean the world system. The world system. No, the people, the people in the world. And that's why he sent his son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, uh, yeah, what? I forget. The world means the world system sometimes. Uh, that's means, not in this thing. No, that's right. it means different things, different contexts. Yeah. What it means. In First John two fifteen, love not the world. That's the world system and okay. the evil. All right. But, what, uh, are we what are we talking about? So this is uh, is love one another, the saved people, the Christian people, and uh, even though they are some Christians, born again Christians, uh, easier to get along with than others. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And are some born again and saved Christians harder to get along than others? Yeah. Okay. So but different, uh, yeah, what? different people can get along with some people and can't with other people. That's true. It just depends. But but see this command here, love one another, regardless of whether it's hard or easy to get to love them, that's what God wants us to do. That takes superhuman love, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, our, in our natural we, we can't do that. I mean, how can we love someone, for instance, that hates us? But uh, and some Christians do hate one another. There's, there's hate that's going around. Is hate one of the fruits of the spirit? No. No, it's not. <laughs> love. <laughs> you think you thinking of some way it's going out. <clears throat> but uh, it's loving the truth uh, that we love one another. And uh, that's in verse number five. Then in verse number six, this, what, how does he define love here? Obedience to the Lord. What else? To the commandments. To the commandments. This is what, that we walk after His commandments. What does it mean after His commandments? After. 
What is it? Obeying. Obeying, right? In line with them, in agreement with them, following them as close as we can. And uh, this is the commandment that, after you've heard from the beginning, that you should walk in. What does it mean to walk in something this way? Conduct your uh, life's practice. Practice it, right? Believe in it. I try to live it and uh, follow in the life. And so now he's going to define what he's talking about there. Uh, this is a very strong commandment. Let's read verse. Yes, Adam? No, I just put my hand up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's read verse 7, 8, and 9 together. So many deceivers are entered into the world. You confess not that Jesus Christ is coming in the world. This is a deceiver, an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we can not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He had the father, father, the son, the son. Yeah. Right, uh, verse 6. Many deceivers. What is a deceiver? How do you define it? In what way do people deceive? Are there Bible reading Christians even that possibly are deceiving? Yes. How would you go about to deceive if you want to deceive someone? Tell you lie, but you can't make sure there's some truth in it. Well, I've made lie, but there's some truth to it. Just a little bit of lye mixed in, just like a little arsenic mixed in with poison into the medicine. Uh, many deceivers. What are some of the deceivers that are unsaved, lost, hell bound sinners? What are some of the deceivers in our present world, for example? What's that? Oh, Obama. Oh, yes. yes. He's certainly a deceiver, isn't he? He lies through his teeth and changes the, the, the health care bill, Obamacare bill. What is it, 40 times? I mean, just, yeah. Well, he says you can keep your doctor, keep your what? Yeah, as yeah. an example, a few years ago, I was uh, going to the store, and this man was always drunk. Or I said, oh, if only I had some $12 to get something so I could get home. And I kind of listened to him, and I thought, mm. and then I kind of rode away, and I thought, well, you know, the only person who helped this man out. So I pulled back, and I said, well, how much do you need? He said, $12. So, Gave him $12. <laughs> and about two weeks, about a week later, I was with my friend Billy. We were in McDonald's and we were pulling up at McDonald's, and here was the same man sitting there. And this kid was next to me. He said, Would you give this man $12? Because he's. Oh. I said, I gave him $12 a week ago. And then I thought, I'll go call the police, but he took off. Yeah. So he was a deceiver. He was yeah, going around deceiving that. people uh -huh. for money. I wonder why I don't want to charge $12. I don't know, but that was his $12. Oh, Oprah's a deceiver, that's too. That's a deceiver. Yes. Yes. Oprah yeah. Winfrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oprah Winfrey's a deceiver, no question. She's a false teacher and deceiver. What about the liberal doctrines of the churches all around us? Are these pastors that preach those doctrines deceivers? Oh, yes. Yes, yes they're deceivers. They pray to be something. Yeah, I thought you were talking about just deceivers. You're talking huh. about spiritual deceivers. Well, anything. anything. Uh -huh. Yeah, real yeah, deceivers. There's a lot spiritual. of spiritual deceivers yeah. out there, too. Spiritual as well. A yes. lot on television. Oh, my. Bill knows about those television deceivers. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Bill. Spit them up. Uh, Mike Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, Todd Coons. Those are the two biggest deceivers I know of. Uh-huh. Uh, they uh, go for blood. They don't teach the scripture at all. They don't even talk about salvation. Never even mention it. All they talk about is giving your love seat, give your money. Right. And they, they're, they're not satisfied with an unspecified amount. Sometimes they come on there and say, we need $58 from each other person. <laughs> not Sometimes 12, they, not 12 No, no. They, <laughs> Sometimes they come on there and they say, we need uh, we need 300 individuals to send us $3,000 a piece. Uh, I mean, uh, the audacity of some of those two is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Tammy, it's a... Well, some of those deceivers are also themselves deceived. Yes. Yeah. And That's then, right. And they're, they're smart crooks, though. I'm not necessarily <laughs> talking about no. the people you mentioned. I'm just yeah. saying there are, there are people that really think they're, they're perhaps they're... Well, teaching this, the truth in their nose. Now, being the first tip, what's that, Anna? I said, I was just quoting, seeing and being. That's right, I get first Timothy. 
deceiving and being deceived. There are some that are deceived themselves, but yet they see up just fine. Sometimes children deceive their parents. Sometimes husbands deceive their wives. Yeah. Their wives yeah. deceive their husbands. Right. We live in D.C. all the time. We're locked yes. up to our clock. Children deceive. Um, it's just, uh, I guess, part of the sin nature. What is the difference between deception and lie? Is there a distinction? What, if so, what is the, how do you go about either? Deception is not we got to be more um, sneaky. Sneaky, okay, a little bit sneaky. A sneaky lie would be deception. It's very it's close. Deceiving. Hard to tell, yes, huh? And deceiving, that includes a lifestyle, I think. Some kind of life, uh, the way you live. Yeah. What you do. Yeah. A lie is outright. They're both wrong. They're cousins. Mm -hmm. like deceiver. Yeah, they're close. They're close relatives. Satan is the great deceiver. Why is Satan called the deceiver, do you think? Is he deceiving you? Blinding the eyes. Blinding the eyes. That's right. Deceiveth the whole world. And uh, he deceived himself in heaven when he got prideful. All right. That's right. Deceived himself for the pride of the devil. I think there are some people that can't ever tell the truth completely. So I think our president's one of them. I don't think he <laughs> ever completely tell the truth. I really don't. Sometimes day after day, I hear. It's a terrible thing to trust somebody and then find out they have lied. And then some people, their whole life is like a lie. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't can't come up with you, but I, I've heard of this. Uh, they're just like one big lie. Nothing they say is true. Mm -hmm. What about the deception of Prince of Gnosticism? What are some of the deceptions there? Lies and deceptions. Deny the deity of Christ. Deny the deity of Christ. That's the worst of all. The worst of all, and all these things, and they say that Satan's going to be saved. That's another deception. Uh, what about the, some of the deceptions of say Rick Norris? Has he got deceptions in him? Uh, I should say Rick Warren. I'm sorry. Rick Norris is another another person. Rick Warren. Rick Warren. <laughs> He's for the One World Church. He's for the United Nations. He's for the uh, everything. Yet, Bill, this is hard to explain, but he teaches acceptance of sin by not even thinking about it. One of the things that he uh, had said for a long time, and he finally did it, was that he wanted to uh, hear Jimi Hendrix's "Purple Haze" in in his church. Now that's a particularly bad song because it's, it's purple haze is a form of LSD, oh. uh, which makes it particularly bad. Mm -hmm. it, it's a total distortion of the mind that God has given us. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's hard to explain how bad that really is, mm -hmm. but uh, things like that and other popular songs like Imagine, like John Lent by John Lennon. Mm -hmm. Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine there's no hell. Mm -hmm. those, those are that's part of John Lennon's song, and that is awful. Yeah. And you know, it's to accept it because it's a nice tune. You don't think about what it means. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that are that way. They don't think about what that means. Mm -hmm. What about the deceptions in Christian Science? Are there any deceptions there? What are some of the teachings? The whole thing is deceptive. The whole thing is deceptive. Is that? Oh, one bad thing that John Lennon said, it was one of his concerts in the late 60s, is that he says we the Beatles will become more popular than Jesus. Christianity will vanish away, but we will always stay. Beatles, Beatles are more popular than Jesus. That's it. So, all kinds of things. But the denial of the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, all these things that the modernist liberals, whether it's the church across the street or any of these modernist churches around. So it's not the truth, it's deception. So he says there are many deceptions. Yes, many deceptions, many deceivers uh, that have run out and enter into the world. <clears throat> now, should we be warned about deceivers? Yes. Is it easy to detect a deceiver? No. So sometimes that take a little longer before he or she reveals the deception, all right? Uh, you can't always get immediately. But uh, many is here entering the world. Now, what is the particular deception in verse number seven that John talks about? The 
That's not that Jesus come in the flesh. Confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, what is that big term called? Gnosticism. What is it? What is it? Incarnation. Well, it's called the incarnation. Come oh, in the flesh. Yeah. Uh, we, we said that verse this, this afternoon, did we not? Uh, 1 Timothy 3 3.15. God, great is the mystery of God, is God was manifest in the flesh. That's the incarnation. Isn't it? The Lord Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh. So here he says, a deceptor, deceiver, and the who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. <clears throat> uh, there's some verses that we deal with in my book, Defending the King James Bible, for example, and other places uh, where the incarnation is denied. And come in the flesh, this is a part of the thing they don't like. You know, say, uh, it's a deceiver. Now, why would anybody not say the Lord Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Why would they say that? What do they mean by that, some of them? Since flesh is evil and wicked, especially sinful flesh, you don't think that the divine uh, Christ could dwell in sinful flesh because it's evil. It's a possibility, one part. What else? They just wanted to exalt themselves above the Lord. Deny his existence altogether. Yes, some folks deny his existence. Uh, they don't believe he's come in the flesh. That's the incarnation. Uh, what is the incarnation? What was involved with that? Is it important or unimportant? It's a virgin birth. It's important. Virgin birth. Virgin birth. It's a methodology that God became man, as it says in 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. And also in John chapter 1, uh, the word became flesh, verse 14, remember, and dwelt among us. And that word is the Lord Jesus Christ. So they deny that he's come in the flesh. Uh, then he says, what does they call this kind of a person that's a deceiver in verse number 7? Both a deceiver and an antichrist. Both a deceiver and an antichrist. <clears throat> now, do the Muslims believe that Jesus Christ is God's son? No. No. Do the Hindus, the Muhammadans, no. uh, various others, all these Baha'i, See, they're all deceived. They're adequate. I guess. I'm sure they're standing. I guess you're mixed up. I don't know why. First John 4, 4, 2 is talking about this very thing. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Uh, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, where we have heard that it should come, and even now it already is in the world. Yes, he's already said that in first John. That's very good. Thank you, Cass. I mean, Tammy, too. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cass came in late. I saw her coming in. I said, well, it's okay. I don't know. Well, we got distracted because we, we didn't something. We distracted We didn't even think you'd be here, so I'm glad well, you came. I'm really glad you came. Worked it out. I'm, I'm glad it worked it out. So notice those deceivers uh, that deny Christ, Jesus Christ is coming. In other words, what would have to be true if you were coming in the flesh and you believed it? What would have to be true of his nature? Verse number seven. What would have to be true of his nature if Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? What theological belief would that have to encompass? Incarnation. Incarnation and what else? What attribute? Person birth, what else? Impeccable. Impeccable? What about his attribute? It has to be deity. And I think that's what he's getting at. Anybody denies that deity, Jesus Christ is coming for another God manifest in the flesh, First Timothy 3.15, is called two things, as Tammy said, deceiver and antichrist. <clears throat> now, the Pope, Rob Winograd, gave me a quote just yesterday or today about Pope Francis. It was an article. You know what Pope Francis says about being a Christian. He says, oh, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just going by memory, something to the effect, you shouldn't be a, a Christian except Christ all by yourself and him alone. You have to be a part of the church. And if you accept Jesus as your Savior all by yourself, he says, the Pope says, it's dangerous. Use that word dangerous if you accept dangerous. Christ. Well, yeah, dangerous. Mm -hmm. Horrible. 
I've got the court up at, at Rob's side. Maybe Roger can give the court to us if you're still if you're there. Yeah, Bill. In uh, that movie that David Pino made, uh, that you were in, and uh, Dr. Williams and uh -huh. the others, there was a section in there where uh, they quoted uh, the Polish pope who died, the one that was two popes ago, uh -huh. and uh, that pope said, "Don't go to Jesus for salvation. Come to me." Interesting. That's exactly what this man is that's, saying. Is, that's what he said. And that Anna? is really bad. Really bad, Anna. I think he's got it mixed up. I think if you try to come to Christ through the institution of Rome, that's dangerous. You're right. He's got the twist on it. That is that dangerous. Exactly. Try to come to Rome. Again, that's because, right. Uh, the Pope said, "Come to me for salvation." That's right. <laughs> and this report, this thing is dangerous to come just to Christ <laughs> without the church. Just again, Anna, you'll see. I know he says it, but you don't get it. I'm not listening to him. He can say whatever he wants, and I won't pay any attention. Now, the Pope, the Roman Catholic system says, really, do they, do they not teach, here's Rob, but do they not teach that apart from the church, you can't be saved? Isn't that basically what they teach? Roman Catholic? I'm going to see what Rob has to say. Give us an exact quote. Ready? Okay. Rob, how you doing from Chicago? <laughs> Hi, Pastor. Hi, everyone. Hi. The quote was, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is dangerous. Oh, and personal? You can't have one outside the church. And yes, I agree with Anna Waite on her, uh, her quote. That it's dangerous to have a personal relationship with the Church of Rome. Amen. <laughs> and that you can't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you do have a personal relationship with the church of Rome, but that's what he said, it's dangerous to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Very good. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, you got it right. And that was Look, Pope Francis? That's Pope Francis. Let's wave to Rob in Chicago. Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, Rob. appreciate hearing from you. And uh, I knew if, if he was there, he'd call up and let us know. He did. Yeah, I, did. I thought he fell asleep. You <clears throat> would fall asleep? Okay. So all these de deceivers that deny the deity of Christ call Antichrist. <clears throat> so all the false religions, whether it's Muslim or Shinto or uh, Muhammad, Buddhist, uh, all these are Antichrist. Do people like to be called Antichrist? No. No. Oh, I mean, it's horrible, see. But does the Bible call these deceivers Antichrist? Yes. Yeah. Well, if the Bible calls it, you just got to quote the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the people that say everybody is going to heaven, is that true or false? False. False. In a sense, that's a deception, is it not? If they tell people they're going to heaven, that they don't worry about it. If they believe the person, they don't trust Christ. They don't to just live in the night. And those people have these funerals, and they have the person that's dead in heaven when they never trusted Christ. This is a horrible deception. If people say you're all saved, why bother trusting Christ? Yes, Kat? The other religions like Islam, Muslims and uh, Indian, and yeah. they believe in the, that there's a savior. Yes. What? 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 Who's the savior? I'm not sure, but my but my daughter has all that information on uh -huh. her in her Bible and everything like that, and I can ask her sometimes about different things. Mm -hmm. Because we have a savior that saves. We have a savior. We have a, 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 a mufti or a grand mufti. Yeah, that's right. They're looking come. for a grand mufti. Somebody's going to come. Yeah, yeah. somebody's going to come, and that's their savior. Yeah, I think that's their savior, the grand mufti. But I think it's our nation that works. Every every religion except you know true born in Christianity believes that you know it's by our own works that we're well, that's, saved. That's another thing. That's right. Yeah. Is that a deception? Yes. Saved by your works. Yes. Can anybody be saved by their works so long? No. After we're saved, should we have good works? Yes. Yes, we better. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, Jacob. Jacob Ryan from Texas. Yeah, Jacob. Oh, hey, Pastor Wade. Hello, congregation. Uh, you know, the Council of Trent has declared over a uh, hundred anathemas on us. Uh, they, they can't. They can't undo what they've done. Uh, because they can't, you know, there's no abrogation in their system, uh, you know, when the Pope makes something up, they just add it to all the other lines. But uh, on this article here, Pope Francis and the Emerging One World Order by Michael Schneider, here's uh, here's the biggest flashback from the Council of Trent. If anyone said that by faith alone, the bias is justified in such wise as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to 
obtaining the grace of justification, then that is not in any way necessary. That he be prepared and disposed by the movement of his own will, let him be anathema. Good. Well, thanks for that quote, Mr. Jacob. Appreciate that. Lord bless. Wave to Jacob in Texas. Jacob in Texas. Hi, Jacob. Very good. Uh, did you hear what he said? He said, if anybody says that you can be saved by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, let it be anathema. See, the Rome doesn't believe in grace alone, through Christ alone, do they? Any other comments or questions? Would you not? agree that this current pope is a lot more dangerous than the person he replaced? I would think he's more dangerous, yes, because he's a Jesuit. This pope that is now in, more dangerous than the other one. I've never had a Jesuit pope, and Jesuits are mean and ugly. They got the, the end justifies the means. Very deceptive, very deceptive. Even more so, the, the others are bad enough. The best of my own opinion, I can't prove it. Yeah, Tammy. Yeah, I think they, they, they have a, more of an understanding of biblical Christianity. I'm not saying they're saved at all, mm -hmm. and, and they use it to their advantage. And they, they go around being even you know, very deceitful. Mm -hmm. Very deceitful. Any other comments or questions before the close? Well, let's close then with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this book of John, the first and second uh, book of John. We thank you for these truths. We ask the Lord that thou continue to give us alertness and help us to love the truth of the scriptures, love the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to walk in the scriptures and in the truth Guard us from evil, keep us in the hollow of thy hand, and those of us who are genuinely saved, help us to glorify thy Son, who now did send into this earth to be our Savior. Help us to be warned about Rome and others' deceptive religious faith that takes away the conviction that we can come to Christ alone, without a church, without a rosary, without anything else, can be genuinely saved. Guide us direct us, bring us back on Thursday for Bible study. And go with us as we part. We ask in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Pastor, I was going to ask yes. you to pray for David.